Hi, what's up? Hello, my name is Liz and you're watching for Booking Out Loud. So today I'm embarking on quite a mission, at least in my opinion. So two months ago, I read It by Stephen King, which was about 1,130 pages, give or take. And so before 2020 ends, I want to read The Stand by Stephen King. This book is Stephen King's longest book to date. This edition is 1,152 pages. One second. 1,153 pages long. And this is the complete and uncut edition. So I read online before I started this that Stephen King re-released The Stand in 1990 with additional edits and I think pro made the intro longer and added references to make 1990 the current time in this book and that made this book about 30 pages longer than the original so I do have the most recent edition to my knowledge and on that note too, look at his picture. Isn't he adorable? I love these old pictures. I can't, I can't help it. I just can't. But I want to finish this before 2021 comes around. And I think I'll be able to, even with all of my other reading. In order to do that, I do want to read about 100 pages of this book a day for the next two weeks or so. So I'm hoping that I'll get that done. I will admit I don't know too much about this book. I know there's people that absolutely adore this book. I know it's Stephen King's take on ap apocalyptic end of the earth plague-esque sci-fi horror novel so I I don't know how well that will go considering it is 2020 and we're quarantined and all the things have happened but I'm hoping it's going to be a little bit different where I can enjoy it without the plague thing getting in the way but honestly, I, that's all I'm going into it with that knowledge. I know he's edited it. I know it's his longest book and it's sci-fi horror apocalypse-esque. I love apocalyptic tropes. Gotta love the end of days kind of tropes. And it's currently my longest book in my library. So wish me luck. I will hopefully update you every day as I take this journey and we will see how this goes. Okay, so as an update for pretty much my first day of reading The Stand, I'm about 180 pages in this book in chapter 23 and it's It's intense, but more on the side of a looming dread happening. The book starts out with this security guard, Charlie, getting his wife and three-year-old daughter up in the middle of the night to run away from this facility that he's guarding because there was a leak of a disease, a flu, like disease that's very contagious and very deadly. And he's trying to outrun this disease. 
and the security just was not good enough to contain the disease as it should have been. And so the security guard, Charlie, was able to flee, but in doing so, spreads the disease wherever he gets away to. And then the next chapter, so chapter one, is one of our, I think, going to be our main characters, Stu, working in about three states over. And Charlie's car crashes into the place that he's working. And you find out that Charlie's wife and daughter are already dead with this disease. And Charlie's pretty much dead as well. And that's why the car is crashed. And so you have three states that are already, you know. And then you have your main character, Stu, who is trying to do the right thing, but is also putting his co-workers at risk. And I, I, they don't know that this disease is coming, right? So they're just trying to be good citizens and saving these people. And they figure out that this car is full of very sick people. And then throughout the couple of chapters, this town is going through and these people all start getting sick. It's a very flu-like illness. So you start getting a cough, you start getting a fever, and then it rapidly deteriorates until you die. And then you're introduced to Fran, who I think is going to be another main character, and she's finding out that she's pregnant due to a bad batch of birth control. And she's 21, so she's really young. Her, she knows her parents won't approve. And she's going through that Well, also, you know, people are getting sick around her. And then finally, we have Larry, who's this up-and-coming singer. He's had a single on the Billboard charts. So he's doing okay, but not amazing. And he's finding out that he's spending way too much in LA or Hollywood and he has to come back home. In the last chapter with him, his mom had gotten sick and he's realizing that it's not this disease and this illness that his mom has not doing well at all. And like I said in the beginning, these chapters are full of stupid mistakes or unintended consequences. And this disease just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger where it just becomes unstoppable. Stu, one of the first people, ends up being immune. And so the government takes him away to a facility and Again, stupid mistakes. So these doctors and nurses start getting sick and they consequently die from this disease while also trying to study Stu in order to find a vaccine. And that's where we're at right now, where the world is starting to figure out, wow, there's this unknown disease happening and it's killing almost everyone and there's nothing we can do, and everyone's basically sick at this point. And it's scary. It's it's intense, actually, because you know that they don't know, and you're just this person observing it as the reader and being like, oh, no, don't do that, don't do that, or ooh, no, no, report that, and it's just not happening. So again, it's it's getting intense and it's only less than 200 pages into the book. So I'll update you later and see you. So I came into school today and that means I've been listening to the stand on audio all day. Reading about Larry and Rita's escape from New York while grading papers and planning assignments just seems to be wrong because they're climbing over dead bodies and decaying corpses and I'm just here 
being like, hmm, this assignment seems to be a B or an A or let's contact this kid because they haven't turned in anything. That's that's not right. And I need to reevaluate my uh, my choices in life. This is getting pretty creepy. Not going to lie. That was just my really quick update for now. I'll get more into it later. All right, so I'm on chapter 45 or page 481 of The Stand, and things are getting a little interesting. Um, we have groups expanding and kind of following each other. Uh, Larry got together with a couple people. Rita is dead, but Larry got together with more people, and now he's following Harold, Franny, and actually let's go back. Harold and Franny are now teamed up with Stu, and that's a whole nother thing, but Larry teamed up with a couple other people, including a girl named Nadine, and I think she's gonna be important, but they're following Franny, Harold, and Stu. This is a prediction. We'll see if I'm right, but I think Stu and Franny are going to get together and that's not going to make Harold happy at all. And we'll see what happens with that, which kind of makes me nervous because Harold does not seem stable. Just saying. And then they all had this weird dream pretty much. And I think that's where they're going to who? Abigail, mother Abigail. Yeah, Mother Abigail. It's like this this tie that's bringing them there. So we'll see. The world's basically over. So these are all the people who survived the plague. And this is what's happening afterwards. So my conclusion is book one is all about the world ending. And now book two... Again, I'm only like three chapters, two chapters into book two. Is all about them building a community maybe after the world is kaput. It'll be interesting. A uh, lot of characters now. And I think I'm actually going to have to care about them at this point. So they're not all going to die within a chapter. Which is good to know. And I'm still definitely keeping my eye on Larry, Franny, Stu, Harold, because those are carryovers from the first book. So we shall see. I know tomorrow I'm going to be able to do a lot of audiobook. In fact, here's like a little tidbit. I don't know if you can see at all with the sliding, but if you see, you have a couple of tabs here. Ooh. You have a couple of tabs here, and then there's this huge open space. That was a whole audiobook from Tuesday, and then I started reading again from the book. So I did a lot of chunk from Tuesday's audiobook reading, which was really nice. I enjoyed the audiobook. I thought they did a really good job with that. But I will update you again later, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Bye! So this is what my students see when I work from school. That's interesting. Anyway, so I just finished chapter 47, which was a long one. And it focused on Franny and Stu and Harold, plus the group that they are now accumulating. And it was really interesting. And I want to say right off the bat, I was completely right. Stu and Franny got together and Harold's kind of pissed about it. So, I'm amazing, I know. And once again, I'm just gonna point out, this is 
a weird book to read while you're preparing lessons, grading, and just all around working in a school. But I'm going to continue. It's getting a lot more violent. It's getting a lot more how are people going to survive when 99.4% of the world is now dead. Uh, They just had a kid have appendicitis and because none of the people in their group are anywhere near doctors or surgeons or vets, he died because they couldn't figure out how to remove the appendix. I mean, they're going back to a time where essential skills are needed. And if you're a computer scientist, if your skills are kind of soft skills that made you money before the collapse of society, they're useless now. And World War Z, I remember, did a whole section on that, which was really interesting where it's kind of like a flip of society. If your skills were more like hands-based, you're now needed a lot more than if your skills were more mind-based, which makes a ton of sense, and yes. Yeah, this book is really violent, very grotesque. What's interesting to me is right now we had a full chapter on Mother Abigail, who's this really, really old woman, and all of our characters had dreams about her and told them to go to Nebraska where her house was to kind of meet her. They're kind of, or Stephen King is kind of putting her out to be this messiah almost or like this this godly woman or like a, this good entity, I guess. And if you find her, things will be all right. And more and more people are going towards her. However, in this last chapter, they really showed who her opposite was. It's this, I think they're calling it this black man or this boogeyman. And I think it's going to be Randall, who's actually this character from the Dark Tower series. Glad I read that before the stand good decision on my part, unknowingly. And it'll be interesting to see, like, all the good people in society go to this area or to this woman, and then maybe, what, all the bad people are going to go to this man, and is it going to be, like, a war between the two? Or maybe it's going to be mixed, right? I mean, you have this good, quote-unquote, woman on this part of society, but you'll have a mix of people go to her and see how that works out. And then you have this quote unquote bad man, an evil man in this part of society. And you'll have a mix of people and see how that society works out. And it'll be an exploration on social construction. We'll see. But Stephen King does not mince anything. And it's definitely interesting to see him construct a, a basically an apocalyptic end of times world so I am very much liking it at this point I think I'm about halfway through so we'll we'll see we'll see and I will check with you tonight as I continue listening to this book okay so I was just um, trying to flip through my hard copy of my book from what I listened to on audio this morning. And I want to show you one of the pictures that I missed. And it was, is intense. And always ignore my life, my mess of a desk. But watch this, watch this. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. That would be an illustrated picture that I missed because of audio. 
wouldn't it? But I just wanted to share it. <laughs> Have a wonderful afternoon. Yeah. So I don't have the book with me, but I just reached chapter 45 or around page 710. And I have to admit, I am getting a little, not bored, that's the wrong word, but I'm ready for more action because I... The book was incredibly action-packed. A lot of death happened in book one. And then all of a sudden in book two of The Stand, you just have so much psychological stuff, I guess you would say. And that's fine. I completely understand world building and introducing all these new characters which are a ton or getting all these characters together and Stephen King does a lot of that and again Stephen King is incredible on characterization I cannot deny him his abilities but at the same time I'm very much ready for these characters to start interacting between Randall's civilization and Mother Abigail's civilization. And I know we just had the Trash Man's chapter, which I think was chapter 40 or 41. And that chapter was definitely its own thing. There was things I really, really liked about that chapter and also could have really done without. I don't know what that, let's be frank, I didn't really understand why the kid needed to molest the trash man in order to develop his character. But at the same time, having the trash man go into the tunnel that Larry did was awesome. I loved the parallel storylines in that chapter in particular, and I loved how the trash man overcame the kid, finding his, I guess, dogs, wolves. I imagine that they'll be very influential later in the book. But the kid itself just seemed like a character that was there to be this overarching evil person in the trash man's plot that didn't need to be there consequently because he already had so much backstory during his juvenile stint or during during his jail stint and it just seemed overkill which king does seem to continue on doing but that, again, is just my opinion. When the trash man goes to Randall's camp, I really enjoyed his characterization development or his development into becoming more enamored with Randall and his sense of belonging where he's never felt that before and just being almost cultivized, if that's even a word, into this new camp. Whereas you oppose Mother Abigail when you're welcome to her camp and they now have an election for their council and it's very much not democratic, uh, democracy per se, but it's very modern almost. Again, bad use of words, but it's what I can come up with right now. But you clearly have a sense of 
Mother Abigail is right and, or Mother Abigail is good and Randall is the sense of wrong in this world. And they're clearly going to clash because you have Harold as a character and he's in Mother Abigail's camp and he's going to defect to Randall's camp, city, whatever. And you have the characters even talking about that right now, where you have them discussing, you have these two camps instead of multiple city-states, and you have the characters discussing, isn't this weird that you have these two entities really separating the United States into two separate places where they really should be separating into small city states or places. Again, I didn't read too much from yesterday. Only about a hundred pages or 150 pages, thereabouts. We'll see where it goes. I hope to read a hundred more pages tomorrow. I don't know. It was really interesting to see Larry finally meeting Harold, who he's kind of been idolizing as he goes through his journey to find Mother Abigail. And I did like that sense of characterization for both Harold and Larry, because let's be realistic, Larry meets Franny and Harold and Stu and they're nothing like what he's imagined in his head. And that's kind of like what you see with people idolizing people in this day and age, even 30 years from when Stephen King wrote this book. Don't meet your heroes, never introduce yourself, never try to find them, that kind of thing, right? And then Harold is just... Harold, right? <sighs> It'll be fun to see where the story goes. But I will see you tomorrow to see where it does take me. But have a wonderful night. And I hope you're having fun. So I just finished book two of The Stand, and that's where I'm at. So that's about, oh gosh, well, chapter 61 and page 931. So I am a good chunk of the way through, and book two was really interesting, especially this part that I just finished where you had a lot of the politics of this place uh, uh, of Mother Abigail's section of the world, this post-apocalyptic world, where Larry, Fran, Harold, I guess, Nick, not really Tom, not really Nadine. But Larry, Fran, and Nick are trying to create this new society from the remnants of the old. And in particular, they're trying to vote in, reestablishing the constitution, trying to use committees and boards to create this democratic place where people pitch in and get together, right? 
And of course there's other things that happen, but I thought it went almost a little too smoothly. And of course there's bumps in the road. I mean, Mother Abigail goes off and doesn't really help in the political aspect. In fact, she kind of discourages things in a sense, but overall it was just a very calm section for the majority of it with this looming boogeyman, this looming shadow in all of their nightmares, right? You have Randall on the other side of the country creating this opposite society where it's more like his dictatorship and he's in all of their dreams kind of pushing them towards something else and in particular this manifests in Nadine's mind where she is being pushed to do stuff that she necessarily doesn't want to do but Randall's deep in her psyche and forcing her to do some pretty evil things and then Harold whew, let me tell you I called it I called it Harold not a good person egg guy boy whatever you want to call him no bueno Mm -mm. but let's be frank Harold did not leave quietly he decided to choose to leave I guess when he was outed when his ledger or diary was discovered and he left with an explosion and killed Nick who I loved by the way Loved his character, loved how Stephen King developed him, and then he kills him. Because of course he does. Thank you, King. And now we have a clear attack from Randall. And Mother Abigail is sending her own group to Randall's camp to, I guess, attack him as well. Interesting in it of itself. I'm not gonna lie, I wish we had more insight in Randall's camp and I'm hoping we'll get that in book three, which I think we're gearing up to. And it'll just be very interesting to see how different it is with this new society or I guess the second society. Well, I mean, I'm on page 931, and there's only 1,000, only 1,000, 1,158 pages in this book. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to finish the stand tonight or tomorrow. Whew, that would be exciting. And then I can go on to read other things and, of course, be excited to finish a great book. But I will check in with you later, hopefully with some good news, hopefully with news that this book really picks up and things get way exciting because I'm thinking that it will. Like it's been a roller coaster where you, it goes up, we hit like a climax and then it goes back down and then we go up and hit another climax because why not? It's a book this beefy, why not? All right, I will talk to you later. Okay, wow, is it incredibly dark in here. Does that help at all? Okay, sorry about the lighting, but um, it's late at night on a work day. All right, so I just finished the stand and my timeline was pretty accurate, about a hundred pages a book, hundred pages a day. And yeah, I finally understand the cover and what it's about. I loved, loved the ending. It was absolutely phenomenal. And of course, 
the characterization was phenomenal. At one point, I really thought Stu was gonna die in that third book, and I'm really, really glad he didn't. And of course, I'm incredibly glad Franny's baby survived. And it just had, <laughs> Stephen King had this ability to give you so much hope at the end, but then at the time, at the same time, like crush all of your hopes with that very, very last page. And his ability to do that was just blowing my mind. Also, just talking about the trash can man, I cannot believe that happened. Like, he wasn't necessarily scary to me at all, but holy cow. Wow. This was a great book, I think, but I also want to take a day to kind of digest it and think about it more before I give my overreaching final thoughts. So I think I'm going to talk to you all tomorrow. So. Alright, so it has been like 12 hours since I read this, so I was able to sleep on it. Let's just put this guy right there. Meh, it works. And overall, I think I really liked it. It was certainly an interesting read. And it gets in depth. There are so many characters you have to learn or unlearn when they die. And it was just interesting too to see King's take on an apocalyptic world and how people would react in different senses. Not to mention a end of days plague phenomenon, especially in 2020. I did really enjoy Randall coming back in this book, especially having read the Dark Tower series this year. That was incredibly fascinating. I didn't truly enjoy Randall in the Dark Tower series, but I did really enjoy Randall in The Stand. And I just loved that ending. That ending was phenomenal. It was just so hopeful and almost happy. And then at the same time, Stephen King just hits you with that last two pages and be like, mm -mm, don't be too happy. Nice try. So why not? The, the characters were phenomenal. The setting was phenomenal. And the setting descriptions were creepy as all things could be. And what better way to describe this book as just being descriptive? I mean, with the thousand, hundred plus pages, how could it not be? And there wasn't really a time that I could say that this book was too long because I felt like you really needed almost everything. I don't know if I would go out there and say, you have to read this book. I would say if you're curious about it and you're a fan of Stephen King and you're a fan of apocalyptic stories, you're a fan of sci-fi, you like political stuff, you like grotesque settings in some cases, it's definitely a very interesting book and I would recommend it in that case, but it's not a must read. I know a lot of people don't like longer books like that and that's why I'm saying you don't have to read it but I would say it's it's a good read if you have not read it before and you're interested in things like that like really interested yes pick it up I'm sure there's a lot of used stand books out there or even just good deals online or even a local library would be able to offer you a copy and of course I think there's a TV show out there, 
I know CBS All Access is coming out with a new version of a TV show. I thought I read something about that. And that might be my next endeavor is to actually watch that, hoping that it's good. We'll see. But I'm giving it a four out of five. It is not the best book I've ever read. It's not the most descriptive book. I wasn't in love with every single character, not to say that they weren't good, but it's also not a book I'm going to reach for next month to reread it. I don't know if I'll ever reread this book just because it is incredibly long. However, I can appreciate how well it is written and how kind of engrossed I was. So yes, thoroughly enjoyed this book. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my journey through this and I will see you next time. Bye. No, I don't.